We've got the latest Lakers rumors coming your way on today's Lakers report. Matthew Peterson here filling in for Marshall Green. And we're going to kind of look back post-trade deadline after all the dust has settled and see how the new guys on the roster are looking and what to expect moving forward. Now, we have you covered for the rest of the season and beyond, which is why you have to subscribe. Join one of the fastest growing Lakers YouTube communities out there when you click that sub button and you'll get tapped in with the best free content available. Now, we had some new guys on the street in their debut against the Golden State Warriors. Here's how they fared. Malik Beasley, not too good. He went two for nine, only four points. Jared Vanderbilt, on the other hand, 12 points and eight boards in his debut. D'Lo returning to the City of Angels, 15 points and six assists. And then Mo Bamba, everyone's favorite song, did not play. He is still getting back from the suspension after a bit of a scuff, but they expect him to make his debut against the Blazers. Now, I want to know from everyone watching right now, which new Laker do you think will have the biggest impact? Shout out slash credit to anyone that does not put D'Angelo Russell because that's probably the easy answer. The Lakers need help essentially everywhere right now, and he's a fan favorite. But who knows? Vanderbilt could really uh, grow and blossom into a nice rotational player for this team, maybe even a starter one day. Now, of course, there is the entire Russell Westbrook saga after he was traded to the Utah Jazz Technically, he'll never even get on a flight to Salt Lake, most likely. But Anthony Davis, the cornerstone, one of the pillars of this franchise, franchise weighed in and chimed in on Russell Westbrook and where he's at mentally following the trade. Here's what AD said. I was kind of in that situation in New Orleans. Fans and organization, everything. We had a conversation today. I'm not sharing what we talked about, but I feel like he's in a good place mentally. It can weigh on someone when I feel like the world is on your shoulders from a playing standpoint, media standpoint, fans, everything. I'm not sure what's going to happen with him, you know, getting bought out or, or what or anything, but I think he's in a good place, all right? Being in trade rumors all off season long, it's going to take on toll on anybody. I know myself included and probably a lot of you watching, we love to talk about trades, but there's a human element to this, right? You live in one city. Imagine if one day you walked into work and your boss said, we traded you to another branch across the country. Like, that might sting a little bit if you've got some friends and some buds at work and boom, you're packing up and moving. Of course, this trade feels a little different because it's more so of we don't really want you around here. And that's not going to fit well, sit well with someone like Westbrook who has such a long storied and successful NBA career. Westbrook this year, though, it just never, it hasn't worked out. Since LeBron James brought him to L.A., it has never panned out that everyone thought it could. Well, I wouldn't say everyone. Some thought it could. 15.9 points per game, 6 rebounds, 7.5 assists, and 41% from the field. I thought Russ would embrace that six-man role a bit more than maybe he ended up, and that may have been the ultimate dagger in the back for Russ was that where he thought he was was not where the coaches and really everyone thought he was. And he wasn't ready to take a lesser role on this team. So L.A. had to move forward with a new plan of attack. It's unfortunate that the Westbrook deal didn't work out well for both sides, right? But at the end of the day, the Los Angeles Lakers corrected their mistake. They didn't sit by and let Westbrook sit on this team and really continue to be a part of a sinking ship. They pivoted, they went a new direction, and they show that they're committed to trying to right this ship and get back to being towards the top in the West right now, which they are very far away from. So let me know what you're thinking. Are you happy or sad that Russell Wilson, excuse me, Russell Westbrook is gone? Give me an H for happy or an S for sad. Let me know in the comments section below. Now, these awesome city jerseys are on sale right now at Fanatics, but they won't be for a long time, which is why you got to get in when it's hot. Go to chatsports.com slash City and get this little awesome LeBron James city jerseys on sale thanks to Fanatics. I put that link for everyone, by the way, in the comments and the description of today's show. Speaking of Braun, let's talk about the latest injury update from Sick. So, LeBron is dealing with a foot injury and said the pain was unbearable. 
during their game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, it's a bit interesting because he was at the Super Bowl yesterday, and do with it what you will. He was, and we'll get to it more, was the only guy there who was booed, um, at least from reports of putting him on the Jumbotron and people at the game, but that's what happens when you're at the top. Now, Brian Windhorst over at ESPN wrote this, saying, The things we see in the locker room are him getting, are him getting it stretched out. It's his left foot. The team's terming it a left ankle injury, but for me, from what I've seen, it appears to be the foot more so than the ankle. Now, it was so serious that he went for an MRI this week, which came back clean, which is good. Darvin Ham said there was one area of irritation, kind of vaguely. Don't really know what that means. He is ruled out for tonight's game against the Blazers. I don't have the magical answer for you of when he will come back, but it has to be soon if the Lakers want any chance of salvaging the season. Because the Lakers go usually as LeBron goes. And even when LeBron's at his best, that sometimes is not enough. Now, like I mentioned, though, he was at the Super Bowl. So he's good enough to walk up the concession stands at least, right? That's got to count for something. Um, and then, like I mentioned, he was booed at the game. So do it that which you will. I wasn't there. So I wasn't booing or cheering. But he was at the Super Bowl. So... I don't know if it's a bad look if you're at the Super Bowl and you're in season and your team's playing the next night in Portland and you're not there, but you're also LeBron James. If you're hurt and you want to miss the Trailblazers game tonight, which, by the way, is at 7 p.m. Pacific, then you don't really have to go to the Trailblazers game. That's what happens when you're the all-time scoring leader in the NBA. You get to miss games when you're hurt to go to the Super Bowl. That's LeBron James for you right there. Now, if the Lakers want to make any run of the playoffs, like I mentioned, but I'll say it again for the people in the back, LeBron has to get healthy. There's just no way they're going to rally without him. There are, what, five games below 500? Tough road tests up in Portland. Never an easy place to play. You fall to the Trailblazers, you fall six games below 500. Yeah, they are going to need LeBron healthy ASAP Rocky. He's putting up over 30 points per game, eight and a half rebounds, seven assists. The crazy thing about LeBron's stats is you could look at them, and if I remove the year, you really could guess any year, and you'd probably be right. I mean, he's just been that good for this long. Playing at this level at his age is absurd. I mean, he's at the point where he might start averaging his age in points. He's not too far off from it, and he'd definitely be a first to do so over 30 years old plus at this point here. So show the King some love if you want to see him get back on the court soon. Spam six in the comments section below. Plus, if I see you write six in the comments, then I know that you made it to the end of the video, and that makes you a real one for watching all the way through.